The opinions expressed in this video reflect the opinions of the participants only and do not reflect the opinions of the producer or Columbia Law School. Columbia Law School and or Columbia University in no way endorse this video. New York Yankee hat to the fullest, one law, SA Puerto Rican chocolate deluxe. Please. A member of the Ivy League, Columbia Law School traces its roots to the end of the 18th century, though the program was suspended for a time and re-established in 1858. Today, Columbia is housed adjacent to Columbia University's primary Upper West Side campus and has a student body of approximately 1,200 JD students. Columbia's law library is the second largest law library in the country, reflecting the school's diverse areas of expertise. Columbia is presently under the direction of a very young dean, David Scheitzer, who was elevated to his post at the age of 35. Under his direction, the school has begun a campaign to increase the number of faculty by 50% without increasing class size. Columbia has long been considered one of the top five law schools in the country and was recently ranked number four in the country by the U.S. News & World Report. Columbia has produced many important figures in American society, including two American presidents and six Supreme Court justices. Let's meet some students. My name is Alex Bomstein, and I went to Cornell undergrad, and I, I went straight to law school. I didn't pause um, to do any work or anything like that. My name is Alita Garcia, and I'm from Southern California. I went to Stanford University for undergrad. Hi, I'm Chan Casey at Columbia Law School. I, uh, I'm a 2L here, and I decided to come to law school kind of late in life. I was an actor for 12 years before coming to law school, uh, living in New York for most of that time. I'm from Virginia. Um, and I decided to go to law school because I was sick of looking for acting work. I'd act maybe three months a year and the rest of the time I'd have some unfulfilling day job working as a secretary for attorneys or whatever and I, I always felt like I could do their jobs and that I might like it. In addition, I'm gay and I'm very interested in gay rights issues, so that's one of the reasons I wanted to come to law school. My name is uh, Shaker, I'm from Michigan, went to undergrad at University of Michigan and just came up here for my first year of law school. Why did you choose Columbia? I came here because I wanted to go someplace close to home that was a good school and uh, had a lot of things I could take and basically Columbia fit the bill. The reason I came to Columbia was I just thought it was time to get out of California and try something new because I've been on the West Coast my whole life and in my opinion this was the best school on the East Coast and to get an opportunity to live in New York for three years seemed like the best reason for me to go out here really. I looked at a number of other schools. Columbia was the best school that I, I looked at. Um, I applied to Columbia early decision so once they accepted me there was no real, there was no real decision process to be made. But in in choosing the schools that I was going to apply to, I made sure that they had welcoming atmospheres for gay and lesbian people. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I would pretty much be assured of a job once I got out of law school because of the mountain of debt. Um, and I kind of wanted to stay in New York, so that made Columbia my top choice. Uh, you might say NYU would have been another good choice, and I did apply to NYU, but uh, just having lived here and lived in the village for a really long time, I liked the idea of coming to a school that kind of had a campus and was elsewhere. So that's why I applied early decision to Columbia. I think part of it was being in the city. I lived in Michigan, I grew up in Michigan, an attempt to get out, but the school in particular, the professors here, um, a lot of really, really good professors, a lot of chances to get to take some classes with people who are legends in the field. So it's quite, it's been a good experience. How have you found your fellow students? I don't know how you're supposed to expect law school students to be. Um, I think I expected them to be meaner than they were, and they're a lot nicer than I expected, but at the same time, they're much, it's, it's self-selecting, so they're much more of a type than they were up at Cornell where you had a broad range of people. The student body's kind of, I would say, maybe half and half split between your like ultra-competitive people that are kind of uptight and always on the grind and always in the library and you know a lot of people get really dressed up for class and then there's people like me who will go in their pajamas to class so you know there's a good balance um, but the workload is so high that I personally haven't had the opportunity to really really build good relationships like strong friendships with people 
just because after class you have to go and read because there's just so much reading to do. So that's been a big difference from undergrad, adjusting to that sort of, you know, like your work is like everything to you sort of lifestyle. But besides that, everybody's been kind of cool. The professors have all been really cool. Um, they all have been really approachable. I have no problem asking questions in class and stuff like that. So. Uh, very diverse, uh, very intelligent. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely here on the basis of diversity. I didn't really, I didn't grow up, I don't think, in undergraduate school, so my grades kind of suffered, and uh, I'm here because I have an interesting life story, I think. Uh, I'd say probably a lot of people are like that. Um, there are, I think there are something like 10 actors in my class. I know that in the 3L class there's an actual working opera singer. Um, there are people from all walks of life, all countries. It's a great place. Do people here seem to focus on law, or are people involved in clubs and extracurricular activities as well? You know, you can't just do the law, or, you know, that's the end of your life right there. <laughs> um, and I do find the people interesting. Uh, and, I mean, I do like extracurriculars too. You can't just, you can't just do the one thing. The student base I've been extremely surprised by. It's, it's really not what you hear coming into a first year of law school. I mean, it's, the students here are extremely friendly. It's a congenial environment. You, you get your few students that are extremely intense and competitive, but overall it's just, it's quite a bit of work, but it's a lot more relaxed in terms of students and people helping each other out than you would have expected from what you hear. Well, I'm the treasurer of Outlaws here. Uh, I'm on the Journal of Law and Social Problems. Uh, I'm a member of certain, uh, some other organizations. Uh, I try to, I was, all the last year I was very concerned about making sure I had time to study. So I tried not, to, I tried to limit my involvement with student organizations, but there's so much that you can do that this year uh, I've decided to do a lot more. There's, there's time for fun. Uh, it decreases around this time of year when finals come up. Um, but in general, I mean, it's, it's a fair amount of work. You get your reading. Um, it takes longer to read 10 pages than I ever would have thought in my life, but you get through it. Um, you have a few hours a day. You have, you basically work hard throughout the week and you get the weekends are a little more relaxed and there is time. Again, there's, the law school holds all kinds of events. The students here are fairly cohesive. We had got a, quite a few parks here. We go out and play football games in the park, uh, go out around the city, um, mainly stay uptown just because that's where I know better, but just kind of go around the city. You have a lot to do in New York, so it's not really a lack of things to do. What drew you to law? Why do you want to be a lawyer? I'm going to be going to a corporate law firm when I'm done for a few years. I hope I'll like it because what I was looking for was more substantive, fulfilling work on a day-to-day -day basis. But uh, if I don't like it, I'm going to get out and I'm going to pursue the public interest, which I guess stereotype here at Columbia is not really one of the things that is uh, emphasized. I, that's a stereotype, though, and I wouldn't really find it to be true. I have a lot of friends who didn't even interview for firms uh, knowing that when they leave they want to do public interest. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure that I'm going to get past the corporate phase. I'm pretty happy with the firm that I have lined up. Um, and, uh, but if I do, I'd like to go work for the U.S. Attorney's Office, perhaps, um, assuming that the U.S. is pursuing policies that I'm <laughs> comfortable uh, pursuing. Otherwise, I would maybe go work for, I'd like to work for Lambda Legal Defense Fund or some other. Alternatively, if I turn out to like corporate work, uh, perhaps I will represent nonprofit theater companies or I'm keeping my options open right now. I decided to go to law school because I figured it sort of fit the things I like to do, the kind of doing research and writing and like trying to persuade people about stuff and I thought I'd be decently good at it and you can, you can make a difference being a lawyer if you do the right things, whatever those right things are. I want to do a lot of things, but um, the reason I want to do lawyers, I've worked in all um, social justice type of areas um, in terms of all my prior experience, job experience, and a lot of the frustrations we would get would be with, you know, the law and like the decision making powers, and we weren't in a position to necessarily change those at that time, so that's my primary, primary interest in the law is to get the sort of experience that is going to put me in a position of power to create institutional change eventually. So obviously that's going to be like, you know, 20, 30 years down the line, but that's my eventual goal. Education policies more specifically. So.
I'm not quite sure about that part yet. I, I think it was law school mainly. It was the one field I was actually interested in terms of. It allows you to kind of keep the theory basis. I did a lot of theory in undergrad and it allows you to keep that and kind of apply it to a more real life setting. So it's kind of between this and possibly like a PhD in political science. I just, this is what I decided to do. Not too sure right now. I mean, the, the norm out of here tends to be some kind of a firm job, at least for a while, to pay off debts and then see from there. How heavy is the workload? Do you have time to enjoy New York City? Uh, I have time to have fun, but I also try to define the work as fun sometimes because there is an awful lot of it. This year I have to write a note, which is stressful. I don't even have a topic yet. Um, there's a lot of work, but people here are pretty much coming here expecting to do a lot of work and hoping to do well. There's not much competition in terms of, you know, nobody's hiding their books in the library, but everyone is competing against themselves to do as well as they can. No, all my friends and family would be like, oh, where did you go see, or how's the city? I'm like, I've really only seen, you know, the four block radius of school to my apartment. A couple of weeks ago, I was sitting there and I was reading, and I was like, okay, this is unacceptable. So I just got on the subway and got off on a random stop and just started walking around, but generally, I mean, you end up using a lot of your weekends to study, but I definitely know a lot of people who aren't like me and don't need to read every page to know everything, and they go out and they may very well get straight A's, you know? So it's kind of hard to gauge yourself in terms of the student body, where you fit in with your study style and how competitive it's gonna be, because you really just don't know, especially as a first year, because you haven't taken any exams yet to fully understand like where you fit in and how much work you should be putting in because they try to there's a lot of outside pressures with like you know buying commercial outlines and wanting to know as much information as you possibly can to have the one up on everybody else and I'm not really into that whole competition sort of thing so it's kind of hard to see where I fit in and how much those extra efforts would really help you in your studies. Uh, for me so far, because this is the first semester, is supposed to be different from second semester just because I had a lot of interviews for jobs for after, for next summer, and that took up a lot of time. And it's supposed to get, I figure it's supposed to get better next year. But you know, maybe they just keep telling the, the people the year behind them it's supposed to get better and then it never actually happens, who knows. Can you discuss some of the benefits and drawbacks to life in New York City? It's a big city, um, so that was a change, but I think, again, you have the option of being removed for them, especially up here, and there's just a lot to be offered there that you don't get in other cities. I mean, the cultural events, the, the events in general, just the number of things you can get in the city are amazing. The upside is I like all the people watching and the experience of living in like a really busy area, because I've never lived in an inner city before. Um, downside is it's loud and it's dirty, <laughs> and, um, there was a roach in my apartment. <laughs> that wasn't very exciting. And you gotta walk everywhere. So when it's hot outside or when it's cold, that kind of sucks. Well, as I said before, it's really easy to get to. <laughs> a lot of train lines run through here. Um, there are a lot of things you can see if you actually step out of the, the study lounges and do that. Um, you know, that's a big if. Uh, <laughs> there are... I don't know. Beyond that, a lot of my friends live here, and you know, if I'm in Wyoming, not a lot of my friends are going to be living there. And it's just a lot of people end up end up conglomerating here, and that's a that's an advantage. How do you like the Upper West Side? Uh, I lived on 14th Street and 8th Avenue all year last year, but then my rent went way up, so I moved into Columbia Housing. Uh, I was initially not so happy about that because I found the commute from the village easy, but. Uh, it's cheaper up here, and uh, my access to the school is much better, which is a, a very positive thing. For my student organizations, I'm, it's easy to be up here when I need to be up here. And I have a lot of friends downtown, and I have no problem going down to see them. It's pretty easy. I've liked it personally. I mean, coming from Michigan, that, Ann Arbor is the biggest city I ever lived in in my life. So it's, it's a quieter environment. It's much smaller. I think it's much more conducive to a grad school environment where you have a lot of work. Um, it allows you to kind of not have to deal with the noise in other parts of the city or in other cities. So it kind of, it allows you to stay in New York City, get all the benefits of it, but be far enough away removed where you don't have to deal with it all the time when you don't want to. Can you compare the atmosphere of the East Coast to the atmosphere of the West Coast? I feel like California was way more laid back. Um, my experience at Stanford was wonderful. It's the best school ever. Everybody should go there. Um, but um, 
I, it's hard for me to compare because the type of education is completely different from undergrad to law school, but my professors on the West Coast definitely had a more laid back attitude towards how they approach things. And here it seems very much more, there is very, a lot of like officialness to, I don't know how to describe it, but it's a little scarier in a sense to me. Um, and I think it's just intimidating just being in the city in general and you're with people who have been in this city their whole lives or have lived here for a number of years so they've kind of you know assumed that whole New York kind of attitude or whatever so I mean do I miss the west coast a lot yes but I think being here is challenging me so I think it is a positive sort of thing. Can you describe the Columbia campus? Again, the undergrad campus is gorgeous. Um, the law school is fairly close by. The housing is provided uh, within a reasonable distance, I mean, within walking distance. So it's, the campus is nice. Um, it's got a lot of history, so there's a lot to kind of just look around at and take people to when they come by. Do you think you'll stay in New York after graduation? Oh, I'm definitely going back to LA. <laughs> definitely going back. But I'm happy that I'm here for three years. How have you found the faculty? I mean, I, my civil procedure professor fought Brown v. Board of Education 52 years ago, so it was, it was an experience that you don't necessarily get in other places. I've had some really, really great professors, but to be perfectly frank, I've also had some not-so-great professors. Um, the not-so-great professors, strangely, seem to be the really, really famous professors. I think you're probably going to find that at any school, and I'm definitely choosing my classes based on professor from here on out. How heavily is the Socratic method used? It varies from professor to professor. Um, some do it a little bit more so, some don't do it at all. Um, so it really depends kind of on the professors. It's generally, I mean, you know roughly when you're going to be called on and when you are, you're expected to be fully prepared for it. So it's, it's fairly, it's fair in that sense. I mean, you know when you're going to be called on and at that point they do expect you to know the things back and forth. Columbia has a history of political activism. Have you noticed any political slant here? New York City has a little bit of a liberal slant, which is the case with a lot of cities. Um, although you're bringing in so many students here, we do really have more diverse background than a lot of schools, so it, it mixes there. The political climate ends up with a good mix. I mean, I've seen people on both extremes the last two days. I saw the guy who fought um, Hamdan V. Rumsfeld, on, definitely on the more liberal side, and then Harold Ford Jr., who's one of the more conservative people in, the, on, in Congress. Uh, Justice Alito was here a week ago. So it, you get a mix of both sides. It's really not slanted one way or another. And I'd say that's the same in terms of professors. Does the school draw many interesting speakers and visitors? Oh yeah, there are lots of speakers. I just don't do any of that. I don't go to any of that. You know, you can you have to prioritize your time. You can only you can only do so much. And I kind of put speakers to the one side of like that won't do any of that kind of thing, pretty much. How tough are the winters? For Michigan, it's nice. I mean, it, comparatively, it's 10 degrees warmer every day here than it is in Michigan every time I talk to my mom. So uh, I'm not going to complain about that. I know there's people here who went to school in Florida or in the South who will, but I personally don't mind it. What kind of person might not be happy here? I don't think there's a type of person that shouldn't come to school here. I mean, if you're in a city to where you can find your outlet if you want to towards for like any specific like diverse interest that you have. You have a faculty that's completely diverse so you can specialize in any sort of interest that you want. You know you have your conservative professors, you have your liberal professors. Um, that thing, I, that's something that I have appreciated is that there is a wide range of everything. You know you have like your Federalist Society and then you have your American Constitution Society. You know there's there's both extremes of like of everything across the board, so I don't necessarily think that Columbia would be exclusive towards anybody, so. People who shouldn't come to school here, well, maybe people who, who want to have a, a more varied experience during their, during their, uh, during three years. I mean, I, I like it a lot, and I like the law, and I find the classes interesting, but, you know, in undergrad, I did a lot more variety of things. And so unless you really, unless you know like you want to, know that you want to go into something like this, or at least could see yourself going into something like this, I mean, it'd be silly to go here just to putz around, you know? I can't really think of too many reasons, actually, that you wouldn't be happy at Columbia. We're pretty diverse. I think the school is very supportive of diversity. Um, but you're going to work. 
if you're here and hopefully you're going to want to work. So it's, if you don't want to work, don't come to Columbia. What advice do you have for prospective students looking at law schools in general, and Columbia in particular? I mean, if you don't want to study and you don't perform well if you haven't studied, then I wouldn't come here. I wouldn't go to law school if you don't like to read at all. <laughs> um, that would be my main suggestion. Or if you're an undergrad, start reading now because I didn't read a lot, so I had to like relearn how to read. <laughs> so that would be my biggest advice. Find law schools in general. Um, apply to enough? My advice would be to spend a lot of time on your LSAT and to not feel like you need to fit a sort of mold and to kind of trust your own instincts of what schools you should be applying to because I was told by career counselors and you know pre-law type advisors that like Columbia was too far of a reach for me that I couldn't be here and that I should focus on you know smaller schools or whatever and I really felt that I was a qualified applicant and that I had a good chance of getting in here and I definitely did. Um, you know, I don't feel like you need to be a poli-sci major that works as a paralegal for two years and then gets 180 on your LSAT in order to come here. Like, everybody that I met has a completely different story and so I think just focusing on what makes you tick is like the best way to make yourself the strongest applicant because if you excel and what your passion is, it's going to distinguish you from everybody else. So that would be my biggest um, advice. It's never easy filling out applications, figuring out where you want to go. I mean, I think in terms of actually finding schools, look at the professors, look at the courses, look at the lean. I mean, Columbia was fairly big on the theory and making sure you understand that rather than black letter law. That's what I wanted. Um, so it was helpful for me to figure out where I wanted to go and incorporate that into the application. I mean, you get the option for all these schools to write a statement tailored to the school. Um, if you have a few in mind, definitely take that. If you have a school that you want to go to that has an early decision program and you're certain about it, take advantage of that. It definitely does help you. Um, so I think just do your research in terms of where you actually want to go. I wouldn't necessarily go by just the name or just the ranking. Just go where you think you're going to really get the academic experience you want. Well, for law schools in general, I think this is probably controversial advice, but I would definitely recommend taking an LSAT prep course. Um, it's a drop, the expense is a drop in the bucket compared to the amount you're probably going to have to pay to go to law school. Uh, and it's really very determinative of whether, where you can go to law school. Uh, Columbia in particular, I recommend being very honest in your diversity statement, in your personal statement. Um, we're looking for diversity. Um, do well in school. Uh, in looking at law schools, I really would eliminate schools that you're not comfortable knowing that when you leave the school, you're going to be able to get the job that you want, whether it's public interest or whatever kind of job you want. I think there are a lot of schools around the country that really just, I think there are too many law schools. And uh, Columbia is one that can guarantee you a job. There are maybe 10, 15 others that can guarantee a job, pretty much. And if you can't go to one of those, I wouldn't go to law school. If you're going to go to school out here, save some money. Um, because I know how to live poor, but being in debt is a whole different kind of poor. <laughs> and your loans, they give you a budget, but you know, coming from the West Coast, I've had to buy coats, I've had to buy a bed. You know, there's a lot of expenses that don't factor into the student budget that, you know, I'm really, like, people will invite me out to eat and I can't go because I can't afford it. So I would really recommend saving up some money before you come out here if you have the ability to do so because it is a very expensive city to live in and not having a car makes it hard to kind of get out of the city to get whatever it is that you might need at a cheaper rate.